Ladies and gentlemen, please be advised of the following facts. Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content on a good night. Listener discretion is advised. What did that guy say? I don't know. That music was ripping, though. The phone number for Loveline is 1-800-LOVE-191. That's 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. And now, here's Loveline with your hosts, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, Loveline. Um, just don't say twice in a row, Ben, because uh, we got the delay. <laughs> okay. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. Tonight, filling in for Dr. Drew is Dr. John. You know Dr. John. He's filled in quite ably for Dr. Drew on um, many other occasions, although I can only remember two or three. Well, thank you. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you. It's a uh, pleasure to be here. Good. Now, Dr. John is uh, not a medical doctor. He's not a plastic surgeon. Do He's, you remember what I do? You you do something that you say takes an hour, but it really takes <laughs> 45 minutes. There's a lot of crying, and then there's the exchange of money. It's, right. Well, before it starts, there's... Oh, the exchange of money. Exchange of money in case they, they don't like the outcome. Right, exactly. Dr. John is a psychologist. You're not a psychiatrist. That's correct. And is there some, something else you'd like me to tack on to your title? No, that's, that's okay. good enough. So all those uh, calls about um, Peroni's disease and uh, serotonin retake uh, up inhibitors. We'll and save those. We'll save those for tomorrow night. Thank God we've compensated by having talented uh, guests like Ben Folds. <laughs> <laughs> ben Folds is here. He's uh, representing the Ben Folds Five, who's actually the Ben Folds Three. And um, thank you, Ben for coming in. No problem. Thanks for having me. Ben, I saw in... Uh, first, uh, let me say congratulations. I uh, I think it's cool that... Well, don't take this the wrong way, but okay. that music like your own could be as uh, popular and in, in, uh, gain, gain the audience that it's gained. Thanks. I think that says something about the time we're in, and I think it's a good sign. Good. Here's a band doesn't have electric guitar. Uh, not even electric bass, right? Uh, Stand electric up bass? bass. Well, it's upright bass on um, on the song that's being on, playing on the radio now. But brick, yeah. But when I I saw now, granted I was drunk, granted I was far away, and granted I didn't even know you were playing at the club <laughs> when I went to the club. <laughs> I went to. But, I said, no, I said, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, come, baby, come back here. <laughs> get rid of. Hey, where's Slappy White? Get rid of these guys. <laughs> Uh, I went to the 930 Club in Washington, D.C. when I was there for the WHF Festival mm. that was at RFK. Um, uh, they're going to get mad at me, but I can't remember when the hell that was. When is that, Ann? In like April or May or something like that? Oh, June. Yeah, I was within three months. And I went to this club and I saw you playing and, uh, and uh, e through the drunken haze, I said, there's talent. <laughs> Bass guitar, drum kit, and not that big Def Leppard drum kit either, just uh, the, the one that Elvis used to play with, and uh, stand-up bass and Ben on the piano. So you just got back from Australia, now you're, uh, you didn't play in Australia though, right? No, no, I just, I drove, I drove from Queensland to, uh, uh, to Perth. And what uh, your uh, record guy was telling me, you're just there for two weeks, just kind of hanging out? Yeah, I just did a, it was actually three weeks, it was kind of like my... I went to the mountain thing. <laughs> I, had to get, I had to get by myself for a little while on this drive, and, right. and Australia is beautiful, so... Yeah, you know, you know the. Uh, I don't want to name drop, but uh, I just, <laughs> I had, I had lunch wow. with uh, Dickie from the Boston's uh, today, and he said uh, he, he's uh, the only person with a voice worse than mine, actually, and he makes a living off it too. He, <laughs> he says, uh, yeah, I just got back from Australia. I said, uh, how was it? Sucked. Oh, why did it suck? You know, it's like uh, it's, it's like Florida, but the people are stupid. <laughs> really? So uh, there you go. I mean, here's different what I'm, strokes for different folks. That's what I wanted to say. But I, I don't really like Florida either. But yeah. I guess I just like stupid people. <laughs> he he didn't make it clear whether he liked Florida either, but uh, he just said he'd go to Florida next I time. I bet his music goes down real well in Florida, though. Yeah. You didn't mean that as a slight, did you? No, no, no. Okay. No. Uh, anyway, uh, Ben Folds now is uh, going to rejoin up with the band and uh, play. Yes. And is that tour then just going to keep going? It keeps going and going. Yeah. Oh, actually, this is a quick one. We're just doing a month. Mm -hmm. It's a month, and we're trying to get back in the studio to record another album. This one's actually been out for a while. You know. Was it March that it came out? Yeah. 
Yeah, but that's... Uh, it's a long time to us, but... Oh, it is? I think so, yeah. It doesn't seem like that long. It seems like... What uh, month is this? What year is this? <laughs> well, it was Mar March of 97, right? Yeah, I think so. Was it March of 97? Yes, all these heads... Yes. Right. Well, maybe it wasn't that long. No, I mean, because what's the average time? Like two years in between? Um, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten an average yet. We haven't been at this uh, for about three and a half years, so... Um, I guess it was a year and a half or so before we made our first record, then we just went straight into the second one. Right. Maybe you do. I know, like, uh, what Jules has been doing it for a while on that record. Right? Well, it, what seems to be the uh, trend these days, or I, I don't even know if you want to call it a trend, but a lot of albums come out, and then they see success a year after they got released. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, trying to think of uh, some good examples of that, but... Um, uh, what the hell's that uh, group with the chick who's mad at me? You know what I'm talking no about. Tra Tragic Kingdom. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, like like something like that record was out for a year, and mm -hmm. then it started going through the roof, and there's been... The Sublime one was a little bit like that, and there's been a lot of those examples. So this one's actually came around a little faster than, than those. Oh, I guess so. I didn't think of it that way. That's cool. <laughs> you got about another six years before you got in the studio, go back in the studio is what I'm saying. Ben. Oh, okay. Chris? Oh, can't wait. Oh, you don't go back in the studio. You just go back home and record at home, right? Uh, I think we're going to go to a real studio this time. But you did this we one? We did this one at home, yeah. We in did the first two records in our hometown. In Chapel Hill? Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And the second one that Brick's on, we just did it in one room in my house. And is, there, is, there, is that to save money, or is there a certain ambiance uh, that you get from doing it that way? Um, I'm just a real fan of postcard records. You know, I mean, everyone can go to the, to, well, not everyone, but I mean, going to the big studio is one thing, but sending something from your house is pretty unique. Right. And so that's what we wanted to do. I mean, there's problems with that, though, you know, sonic problems, and you can't see each other as well, and, you know, it's tough. Right. But but I'm glad we did it that way. I just I, The next one, I want to go to a grown-up studio. Yeah. Chris? Yeah. You're, uh, I don't know how old you are. I'm 21. Oh, you're 21. Yep. You're on with Ben Folds and uh, Dr. John sitting in for Dr. Drew. Well, I definitely applaud Ben for taking a trip and going drive, and I know that clears my head, so yeah. I, I definitely say good thought right there. What's yeah. going on with you, Chris? Well, right now, um, I just finished my uh, four years of college and uh, going on to my graduate school, and I came home for a while. And um, my little sister, well, she's not really that little, but she's got a boyfriend. She's pretty steady. But um, my mom's like, well, how did how did you manage your relationships and, and not have sex and all that stuff? And I went, uh, uh, crap, you know, I really got to tell her now. And, you know, I just don't know how to break it to her because I'm like her oldest daughter. And, you know, she's just like been overprotective of, overprotective of me. And she, she just kind of like wants to know. She thinks you're a virgin? Yeah. <laughs> And you don't know how to explain to her that you're a slut? Well, it's, it's only been two guys. Oh, so. that does not a slut make. No, not really. Not a 21. Not these days. That's no, a virgin, I, I, actually. That's pretty selective. If, if you grew up in North Hollywood, where I grew up, you would be a virgin. Anything under 5 by 21 <laughs> or 8 by 23 is still considered technically a virgin in North Hollywood. Holy Moses. Yeah. Chris, this is Dr. John. Let me ask a semi-professional question here. Okay. Oh, what, boy. What, uh, what are you worried about in, in talking to your parents? What are, what are you frightened about? Well, I, can't, I moved back to my house for a little while because it's a bit easier to, to, you know, juggle classes and have, like, a nice, safe place to go home to. And I'm afraid that they're going to get mad at me, you know, because they because I never told them, and I probably should have told my mom, you know, because we're pretty open with our relationship. This is the only thing I have never told her. You have a boyfriend right now? Uh, right now, no. He decided to up and move to England. Mm. So that was kind of ended. All right, but why would she put the squeeze on you if you don't even have a boyfriend? That's a good question. Well, I think she would because of the age I started. My sister is just turning 16, and I started when I was 17. So, you know, she might be like... You know, she it might ruin it for my little sister, maybe. Does your sister know? My sister, I think she has a clue. I never, I never actually told my sister. She, as a young child, she was always the one to squeal. So, you know, it's one of those things I didn't quite tell her. Is she sexually active? No. All right. So, All right. here's my take on this. Okay. If you think your parents are going to freak out, don't tell them. All right. Because I think sometimes people force you to lie by the way they, um, by the way they react to things that you say. You know what I mean? 
I mean, if she's no. going to... F- yes, listen to me, John. <laughs> no, Here, here's, here, no, here's what I'm saying. Some people react so strongly to things that are uh, basically uh, parts of life that they sort of force you to be less than genuine with them because you fear the reaction. They almost get people to lie. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but I don't see how that applies here with Chris. Because I think she's saying that her mother's really going to freak out. I think her mother's going to freak out because she's afraid of what little sister's going to do. Mm, let see. Chris? Yeah? Do you think your mother's going to freak out? I think she might. I think she... I. I think her initial reaction is going to be like, oh, oh, my God, why didn't you tell me, you know, earlier on? And then she's going to be like, well, it happened, and then she's not going to look at it. But also, my dad is the other thing. You know, he flipped out when I got a tattoo and, like, wouldn't talk to me for, like... Uh, listen, if you got a tattoo, he knows... Uh he knows the hymen's long since gone. I, I hope I He does. <laughs> believe I hope he me. Does. There's no nobody with a tattoo is a virgin. <laughs> believe me. All right, uh, go ahead and tell him. Be strong. Stand by your convictions. Yeah, my, I have another. You're 21. Tell him you didn't enjoy it, though. <laughs> tell him you realize it was a mistake. You're not going to do it again. I have one other question. No, we're out uh, of time. What? That's too much time already. Uh, this one's. You might find this one funny. All right, it better be fast. Okay. Ever since I broke up with this guy, a good friend of mine, she's a girl, didn't know she was a lesbian, she's hitting on me, and I don't know how to tell her, hey, look, I'm not into that, without, like, because she's just really, like, pushing me, and I'm like, whoa, there, girl. Okay. Just tell her straight out if she corners you. Just try to avoid any situations, but if she corners you, you got to tell her. Be honest with her. People know what your sexual proclivity is, don't they? I mean, if they're your best friend. I think they... Do you think they can figure that out? I think so. Ben, your friends know where you stand sexually, don't they? I would hope so, yes. Okay, good. And if they didn't, I'd be honest with them. No, what the hell name is that? Mandy? Mandy. Oh, Hi. Mandy. i got to turn the screen. Oh, <laughs> it's Mandy. Mandy, you're 20. You're on with Ben Folds. Yeah, I have a problem. Yeah? I guess you can say I'm the slut. Um, I have a hard time saying no to men. Mm-hmm. And I really don't even enjoy sex. I've never had an orgasm with mm-hmm. men. Mm-hmm. But I have a hard time saying no. Uh, could be some gambling here. Hold on a second, Mandy. <laughs> All right. Oh, John, you know how to gamble? Oh. Ben, you have a dollar? Um, why why actually, do we no. do this? Yeah. Why, why do we do this? Why? To illustrate yeah. I mean, what how... What is the point? <laughs> I wish Drew were here. He always puts a good spin on this. <laughs> uh, you have a dollar for me, by the way, John? We've done this before. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Did I give you your dollar back last time? Come on, give me a dollar. <laughs> yeah, I got 110 bucks for 45 minutes of abuse. Come on. You have a you have a dollar, Ben. I don't. I've got all this Australian money on me. All right, you that's got to be that? worth something. Okay. Yeah, there we that'd go. be fun. That's a five. Right there. For a fiber. That's five. Yeah. Um, who is that? That's that's uh, that's Thatcher. It's the Queen. That's wrong, huh? Boy, yeah, that don't uh, look right. And what's uh, the back? Is the uh, seating chart for the uh, forum? What is that on the back? It's a schematic for some kind of computer, I think. <laughs> the hell, no one of those got country so that? screwed up. Look worth? at this. Is that worth five bucks? It's worth about three bucks over here. Okay, that's good. No, well, we got quite a, a pot going. <laughs> well, do you, you don't have another dollar? I got I a three dollar bill dollar. here. <clears throat> All right, uh, Ben and I will work this thing out. I got some change in my car. All right, here's what we're yeah. doing, Ben. We gamble on people's past. What brought them to where they are today? Here's Mandy. She's 20. She doesn't enjoy sex, yet she has sex all the time. She can't say no to guys. What happened in her environment? What happened with her family growing up? We do this to uh, illustrate how that impacts uh, your um, uh, uh, the rest of your life, your your initial environment. So, like, uh, I'll go first to make yeah, it yeah. easy for you. Okay. I'll say that um, something with Dad. Dad uh, could have abandoned her. There could be sexual abuse. I'm going with sexual abuse, do not necessarily ever, do you ever by not Dad. Go with sexual abuse. All right, smart ass. Uh, this is going to haunt you now. All right? I'm going with abandonment by Dad. Dad abandoned her. Okay? Well, uh, maybe she's just the kind of person that needs to be in love no. to do that. No, you don't think so? Not that a good gambling. Work? That doesn't work out? No, you got you to gotta go back to her past. I mean, most guys are pretty gross. Um. I'll give you some choices. <laughs> Was uh, alcoholism in the family? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, Physical abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, stepdad that got out of line. Um, I don't know. Maybe your father was a f- uh, frat guy that uh, 
that uh, yelled through things out the window. And all right, dad, uh, dad was uh, prone to tantrums. Okay, all right, fine, that's good. Fair enough. You'll never win with that, but it's just Australian <laughs> money anyway. <laughs> John, I'm going to go. Can I go as broad as childhood trauma? No, no, that that <clears throat> covers too many, too many bases. Right. Well, More I'm specific, go with, please. I'm going to go with the. Uh, Sexual abuse. Into the mic, please. Into the mic. Sexual abuse. Well, I, I'm, I'm new to all this stuff, but uh, we're assuming she's got a problem. Yes. Sexual. Well, I didn't assume that when what she said. Well, well I, but, but, but by I don't virtue of the fact know. that she called up and said oh, she's okay. having sex and she can't stop or doesn't enjoy no it, we're assuming it's a problem. Uh, oh, okay. Gotcha. All right, Mandy. Okay. Um, What's I the guess, past like? Um, my dad was really physically abusive. Mm. And I guess you're right in that I was abandoned by him. He died when I was 16, but he was never really there for me. Yeah, but that's not real. Nah, yeah. That's not uh, that's not gambling, winning abandonment. He would have had to cut out early. Well, um, I I think there may have been some sexual abuse from some of my female cousins, but I'm not quite sure. I mean, I have a few memories and things like that, but I'm not quite sure about that. Hold on. John, what'd you go with? It's sexual abuse. Yeah, but you just talked me out of sexual abuse, you bastard. I know, so I could... All right, but th that's thing. unsubstantiated. The main thing is, is your dad was abusive. Was abusive. Yeah, really abusive. F physically abusive. Yeah. But not sexually abusive. No, not at all. Okay. Mandy, in these relationships you're in now, have they ever been physically abusive? Are the men no. physically abusive to you? Okay, so what is the main problem at this point? Well, the problem is, is I'll meet a guy, and I may not, I mean, the first time I meet him, I'm like, ew, gross. He's, uh -huh. you know, I can't stand him. And then once he starts showing interest in me, I'm like, well, maybe he's not so bad. And I end up with all these losers who just end up, you know, treating me like crap. And it's just because I don't say no in the beginning. I don't. And when you say you don't say no, you mean you're being sexually active right off the bat. Right. Okay. All right. Because no. she's um, trying to sort of regain that control that that she lost a long time ago, right? Oh, right. I don't. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, please, come on. Would no, you go with no, me I on some of this stuff and stop being so combative? <laughs> Why all the anger, John? <laughs> you come in here with a lot of it's anger. Confrontive. But I'm not. I'm not angry at you at all. She, did you hear the way he said angry? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of angry. Yeah. A lot of anger. <laughs> all right. So, but Mandy, you know what you're doing, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's sort of the first step to stopping, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, well, there's nothing wrong with having sex, but if you're having sex and feeling bad about it, then there's something wrong with it. I think it. there's a lot wrong with that part. <clears throat> yeah. so, so do you realize that it's sort of compensation for something that may have happened to you in the past, such as, you know, the physical abuse or the sexual abuse? Well, yeah, I understand, and I just... I know what I'm doing. I just can't seem to break the circle, I, I think, is my problem. Because with every guy I have, every guy I go out with or whatever, I make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Hey, uh, Mandy, my problem. you're talking about a pretty clear pattern. Have you ever talked to a psychologist or counselor about this? Yeah. All right, and what was that like? I, I didn't like it. I went for a little while, and I just, I don't know, I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere, so I stopped mm -hmm. going. Well, since you're talking about such a pattern, and there may be some abuse in the past that is precipitating this, I think it'd be important to find somebody that you can talk with and look at the pattern and how destructive this is for you, because you're not getting any enjoyment out of the relationships, and you're very clear about what happened. Mm -hmm. And it may be helpful to talk about it and get an idea of how you can stop yourself from doing this in the future. And you can, even without counseling, you can begin to curtail it a little bit. I mean, it, it's... Well, she's you, got awareness, doesn't she? She's yes. very much aware, but so, that's not stopping it. Yeah, I know, not but it's, it's, it. the, it's, it's the, uh, one of the first steps to stopping it. I mean, it's hard to stop it when you're not aware of it. It's so true, at very least true. Uh, I, it's, I, it's like a, definitely a first step. It's like you're an alcoholic. You booze uh, for many years. You think it doesn't affect you. Then you get to a point where you realize it's a problem. You try to sober up five times unsuccessfully, but yeah. then eventually it happens. Well, another thing we didn't talk about is what else she has going for herself. Why does she keep going to men and, and finding either, is that to raise her self-esteem or to feel better yes. about herself? I'm going, yes. What else is she doing? Well, her, her father was abusive, and then he, he died, and uh, she seeks this attention from men. But yeah, uh, I'll, go, I don't know. I'll go with that. All right, Ben, you lost I like lost. Uh, five uh, kangaroo 
things or that hurts. something. Yeah. But you guys are good at this, though. Yeah. I'm impressed. I went with the sexual abuse, and then... Uh, you I don't even know what I went with. Sexual abuse. But then she... <laughs> she you went with her, her dad that threw a, threw a peg or something. <laughs> <laughs> but she ended up... What, what, did, what did she end up having? Her dad was physically abusive. Physically well, abusive. I don't know. Physically I think that's a abusive. push, uh, John. I don't think that's you win fine. that. I'm giving Ben his uh, five... Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you don't want that. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to talk to... Um, Claire for a second. Claire? Hi. You're 16? Yeah, I did I'm 17. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had a question for Ben Fold. Here he is. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to hey. say, first of all, I think you're really cute, Ben. You have the cutest dimples. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had, oh, you guys are my favorite band, and I was wondering how you got started playing the piano, because I've been playing since I was six, and I stopped out of laziness, and yeah. listening to your CD kind of got me inspired to play again, so... So you stopped playing at six? No, I started at six. You started at six? Yeah, then like into high school, I kind of got lazy. and. I Maybe your father awesome. abused you and you felt you needed to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> six, that's, yeah, and I give me back my money. Um, yeah, yeah, I started when I was nine, basically because uh, my my parents, uh, my father was a construction worker and he was, uh, he, he would uh, remodel houses and sometimes they would uh, not be able to afford to pay him, so they would um, give him stuff, so... Mm -hmm. So they gave him a piano because he knew I was sort of interested in that. So one night he rolled in this upright piano into the house with some uh, some other you know big construction worker guys. They're rolling it in. The next morning I started playing and I've played all the time since. Wow, that's great! You are so good. You're awesome. Thanks. Thanks. And I just want to compliment in your CD. It's really good. And I'm going to buy that the Naked Baby Pictures oh, yeah. CD. I'm going to buy that soon. And I'm seeing you in concert. I think like this Saturday or. Next Saturday, I, don't, I haven't bought my tickets yet. Where are you at? I'm in San Francisco. Oh, okay, I think yeah. that's this Saturday. Yeah, yeah, this Saturday then. All right, go buy the tickets. Yeah, I will. All right, pull your shirt up when he goes into break oh, okay, for the finale. <laughs> All right, Claire. Thanks. Hey, you know, it's something um, um, kind of cool, which is uh, you're... You're bringing uh, you're bringing the piano. I mean, not the pian that the the, the piano has been gone, but you're bringing yeah. it into the sort of uh, pop music thing and making it cool again. For uh, I mean, I, I could imagine that there's some twelve year old who's re inspired now to uh, take the lessons because uh, they're yeah. hearing hearing your stuff on the radio. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be good. John, you play anything? You know, I play the piano from six until fourteen. Yeah. similar to her and then I stopped doing it mm -hmm. and I've thought about going back and, and uh, playing again and I just haven't I, I would like my kids to learn yeah but uh, I don't I think to I me like uh, in, instruments and in second languages and all that it's all the same it takes a certain kind of discipline that I don't can have can I ask you a question yeah. Ben do yeah. you think I would would it be easy to go back I mean sometimes I can pick out the uh, I don't I don't, the I don't keys. know it's, it's kind of you play for 10 years and then stop for 20. I think it would be. I just think it's important to um, be able to have fun on the instrument. Yeah. Pianos traditionally, like, your parents go, you gotta play piano, and they, right. they put you with this, you know, old teacher, and then all of a sudden you're doing something. It's a very uncool thing and to they, do. They but it wasn't it. like that for me. I mean, I just like, I just made noise on it. Yeah. You know, my parents never said, don't make noise on it. I just played dissonance or whatever came to mind. I think that that's the best thing to do, is just have fun on it mm -hmm. for a while, because piano is the most rare. That's what guitar is. I mean, people pick up a guitar and just go, yeah, cool, and they start playing, and it's, their parents aren't standing over them saying, uh, play your Chopin, you know. Uh, I, think, I think that's important. That's excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions, ask them during the commercial break, and we'll be back. <laughs> you have five seconds. Love Line with Adam Cole and Dr. Drew. Two. Back in a minute. One. WEBN. banging his head. <laughs> Drew rarely bangs his head. Unless uh, head. one of the three tenors is in town. Shaking my head. I'm, kind of getting, I'm developing a tremor, I think, is the problem here. Yeah, you're going to start getting into hip music as soon as your kids get old enough to uh, yeah. get weaned off that Barney stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Ben's uh, second CD is called Whatever and Ever Amen, and this one is called Brick. Day after Christmas, I throw some 
clothes on in the dark The smell of cold, car seat is freezing The world is sleeping, I am From uh, Ben Folds 5. Ben Fold is with us tonight. Dr. John is uh, filling in for Dr. Drew, and it's back to the phones. We go. Jennifer. Yes. You're 25. Yes, I am. What's going on there? I'm just eating some ice cream. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put you on hold then. Okay. Okay. Uh, why not, Ann? <laughs> just eating some ice cream when I ask you what's going I know, on. It's not the proper been on response. Hold for 20 minutes, and this. <laughs> question ties in with the song. All right, I'll give her one more try. All right. All right. Jennifer? Hello. 25? Yes. What's going on over there? I'm just, uh, hang on, I had a question for oh. Ben. Ooh, the finger got so close. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's a little nervous being on the air and all. I understand. Let's not I'm make a too. secondary issue out of the ice cream thing, Jennifer. Let's not. Go ahead and ask Ben. Um, 
I really wanted to know what brick meant because it's written in your album, um, self-explanatory, and I, I have this notion that it's about an abortion or something, and I just really wanted it clarified. Um, well, yes, actually, that's correct. Is it? Yeah. It's uh, sort of the story of my 12th grade. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't feel comfortable with answering that for a while after uh, the album came out. Oh, well, I hope I didn't pry too much then. No, it's okay. I decided it was okay. It was easier to answer it in public places than it was to answer four, pe you know, 40 people a day. Right. So, uh, and also I didn't want it really to be an issue song. It wasn't about that. It was more about the feeling well, with, behind Well, with lyrics as it is, I mean, it, of course it would hold some sort of an impact, I would think. Yeah. It touches, you know, I mean, it makes you wonder. It makes you think, what, what is it about? And yeah. that's, the only, that's the only thing I could have come up with. Yeah, I mean, my tour manager says it's about taking your dog to the vet. But, wow. Uh, but well, I guess you could look at it that way too. <laughs> no, I don't. I guess you can't think from of it that way. No, but I, yes, yeah, it's, it's just uh, it's it's more about the, the the feeling than you know. I I write from specific places and I try to per, put a certain amount of ambiguity into it so that it can right. touch more more people than just someone who had that exact experience. How'd you figure that out, Jennifer? Um. Well. Couple through the lyrics or through self experiences. Well, it, it, did you have an abortion? Yes. And did you do you liken a lot of songs to abortion, like "Schools Out for Summer" or something like that, or or is this the first one? No, this is the only. This is the first one I've ever heard that made me think. And, and how did you put it together, though? Um, I mean, was it a feeling or was it, it was specific the lyrics. lyrics? It was the lyrics. Balled up on a couch. Uh, her parents weren't home the finest hour. Um, he's pacing around. They call her name at 730. <laughs> pacing around the parking lot just to put the lyrics together. Right. I'm, you know. Yeah, see, most, uh, I, I don't know. I, I can't figure out. See, I, I just listen to the song and, yeah. and see, sort of tra la la. Like guys, I don't know why guys are like that, but girls <laughs> listen to the lyrics. I'm a huge Sarah McLaughlin fan and listen to her lyrics and well, they like touch I, you. Hey, well, wait a minute. Now, we had Loverboy on here a couple of months ago, and I remember everyone's working for the weekend, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, you want a piece of my heart, you got to start from the start. I yeah, mean, that was the 80s. Let's though. be fair. The 80s are so out. <laughs> All right. So, uh -huh. the road ain't no place to raise a family. But, I mean, it, what, is that fair in assuming that, you know, it's, they call her name and I mean is that what it's all about it's about going through the process yeah. of the dog yeah well, and it I makes sense though that you would have picked it up since you went through the same experience well I don't, what I don't understand is what were the gifts were they drugs that he was selling uh, no, honestly, um, what, quite the way it worked were, with me was that I, I just, you know, you're in high school, you don't have that much money, and right. so it was around Christmas time, right. and I had to sell presents that I got for Christmas to, okay. uh, to, uh, to, to get the money to, to work this out. And the car seat? Yeah, it was freezing. That's all I remember. So I, I just wrote it from experience. It was like it was. It was. It may have been like two or three days after Christmas, but it was roughly the day after Christmas, and... Um, and yeah, I mean, I also had my mono and strep throat at the time, uh. so it was kind of suspicious because wow. it was like six o'clock in the morning, and it's like my little alarm clock went off, and I got my clothes on and, and got in the car and started it and went off, uh, and uh, and we went to the clinic, you know. Did you? How long? I mean, uh, obviously you're uh, ways out of high school. Yeah, um, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, son. Uh, but I mean, when did you write this song? I've been wanting to write this song for a while, but um, I never could work out the chorus to a song like that. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, what do you... I mean, just think about it. What, if you wanted to write about that subject, what do you write for the chorus? It's kind of shocking. So, right. Uh, the drummer, Darren, had this chorus. She's a brick, I'm drawing slowly. And, and um, he brought it to me, and, I, and it, may, it gave me that same feeling somehow in, in a really intangible way not it wasn't literal at all it was partly the music and partly the music and then i decided to you know uh to go ahead and write the story and put it together in a way that i thought was responsible which was the hard part about this song you know right is not to make it something that was sensational so i felt like i was making a buck off people that got an abortion does your uh, old is your old girlfriend aware of all this stuff yeah i talked to her for the first time and in 10 years, uh, you know, right before the single came out, I suspected it might do okay, and I just wanted to say, you know, if you hear this, <laughs> you know, and, and ask her if it was okay if I talk about it, because if it wasn't, I wasn't going to say a word about it, and she mm -hmm. said it was fine, she liked the song, so. Wow. That's, uh, That's uh, very interesting. Uh, now, uh, now when I listen to the song, I can hear it in a whole, whole, whole new way. I can get depressed and kill myself. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to go to break. Let's see, who are we going to talk to? We'll talk to Rebecca. She's 26. 
Um, oh, she wanted to uh, follow up on a call we had last night on uh, bathtub pleasure for women, uh, which is another song you should write, by yeah, the way. Well, that's in the you know, works. Uh, for, Do guys call up on the show? Uh, we yeah. try to we try to weed them out. She wants to know how it works. So, uh, producer Ann, if you could towel off and uh, get ready after the commercial, you're going to have to do some explaining to Rebecca. Love Line. Be right back in a minute. WEBN. For the erotic pleasures of women. It's Love Line. All right. WEBN. <laughs> This is Tori Amos, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Tripp. And we got to get that Tori Amos back in here. I like her. All right. Ben Folds is here from the Ben Folds 5. Whatever and Ever I'm In is the name of the CD. Dr. John is filling in for Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Uh, whatever that last call was, uh, chickened out and dropped off. So uh, where are we going here? Brian. Yes. You're 18. Yeah. What's happening? Uh, yes, when I start to have sex, I, I seem to back out at times, and I, I, I just wanted to know if that was a hormone problem or something that comes naturally. Backing Which, out. Yeah. I, what I does don't, that mean? I don't go through with having sex. I, I lose the... Erect, erection? Yeah. I, well, it ain't really all erection. It's just I, I just lose my interest and mm, so but doesn't the penis quit before you do well no it, it's really in it's in my head i guess i don't i mean i start and i just don't seem to go through with it and all right so but this let me let me make sure we're on the same page here you have a full erection mm -hmm. you are uh inside a woman no, I, I don't get uh -huh. that far. Yes, okay. That's uh, I knew that. Once a guy's there, I don't, I don't care if the Pope uh, comes in uh, with a uh, with chimps on, a, in, on like a mini bike, he's going to finish. Yeah, that right. Happens. You don't uh, you don't get that far. No, I, I just I, I start and when when uh, the girl starts to go down on me, I just uh, I reject her and. I back out for some reason. Uh -huh. Now, are, are you in a relationship with uh, the girls that you're with, or do you know them? Uh, I'm in a relationship now, yes. Uh -huh. How long have you been in this one? Uh, for five months. Uh huh. And each time you try to get intimate, you sort of um, back uh, out? Yes. And So are you a virgin? Yes. Um, and... Even though the, um, the, the, the the penis is willing, the mind is weak. Yes. Okay. Right. So there you are with uh, just as good as an erection as anyone else, and, and you stop. Yes. All right. All right, so what do you get worried about? I, I just wanted to know if it's, it's something that I should, uh, should I, you know, take no. a risk on or... Should I just not think about it? And now, what do you mean take a risk on? I mean, like, like my mind just blanks and I just freak out and I just... All right, that was my away. original question. What are you freaking out about? What are you worried about when you're sexually active? Well, I'm worried about if she's enjoying it or okay. if she's getting a thrill or... Mm -hmm. Are you a religious man, Brian? Uh, I believe in God, yes, but... Mm -hmm. But you, you don't feel it's um, a, a sin or anything oh. like that? No. Uh-huh. I, I wouldn't. If, it, if I felt that way, I wouldn't even go that far. Uh, but, Brian, sure. you are, you're very concerned about whether you're pleasing your partner. Yes. And would you say overly concerned about it? I would say uh, to a certain extent, yes. Okay. All right. I, I have a hunch that that's, that's where the problem lies, is that mm -hmm. the, you're anxious about your performance. Yeah. Performance anxiety. I swear sense. he loses his erection, though. Brian, be honest with me. The erection ends, doesn't it? Yes, it ends. It drops. Yes. Right. Okay. So the, the interest goes first. The erection goes first. But it. But <laughs> no, the erection goes first, and then the then the interest goes. I, I'm telling you. Well, uh, believe me. If he if he had uh, two tongue depressors and some duct tape, he'd he'd be able to finish <laughs> the job. 
All right, but Brian, so he's performance anxiety. Right, is what he's he has. very, very concerned about whether you're pleasing your partner. Right, but this and this happens need, to everybody. Happens to everybody, except for and me. You, you need <sighs> and and Ben. Sorry, ben. <laughs> Brian. I think it's important that you start talking with your partner about how you're pleasing her, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk about it during when you're sexually active beforehand, and become assured that you are pleasing her, mm -hmm. and get her help on this. What is her reaction when this happens? She, at times, she doesn't talk to me for a while, and mm -hmm. I, I tell her my reason why, and she just she thinks there's a problem with my penis, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to get a. a no, your penis well, works fine, right? Yes, it it stays erect. Yeah, and you uh, you work on it solo once in a while, and everything functions fine. Yes. Okay. This is, you're just nervous. You're 18, you're a virgin. You think you're going to have to perform. Uh, so you get that. Uh, it's like uh, Ben, the first time you went out on stage, probably got a little cotton mouth or something. I still do every time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's a lot to be anxious. Go slow about. and talk about it. Okay. And there is a lot to be anxious about. And here's you know, the deal, too. If, if you freak yourself out, the likelihood of this happening again is going to be even greater. You're one good humping away from um, uh, having a career in, in porn. The, you know what I'm saying? I mean, from being a champion humper. Yeah. He needs one good one. That's it. it. It's just how the mind works. Mm -hmm. All right. So you sound like a guy who's full of self-doubt. Well, it, yes, at times uh, I just prepare myself and I get so built up about it. And then I, my mind takes a different way and I just react and I don't go through with it. Yeah. It's like I'm I'd be letting her down. All right, here's the deal, Brian. Stick with this one partner. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be experimenting with other people because there's going to be more anxiety with new people. Stick with her. Be right out in the open with it. Uh, don't don't make it to such a serious issue. Uh, don't um, dissect it down to the point where there's nothing left. This is a little performance anxiety. Everyone has it. Eventually, you'll work it out. And then uh, before you know it, you'll be um, slapping her ass and calling her bitch. <laughs> Right, right, John? God, I am so impressed with you. Thank You've you. You've really you yes. know, done well. <laughs> Jim. Yes. You're 24. Yes, sir. You're on with Ben Foltz. Oh, pleasure to uh, talk to you. Um, first of all, I wanted to comment on Jennifer's call. You remember that? No. Yes. Oh. She talked about Ben's song. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, the abortion. That's yeah. why I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I realized it was about abortion, and uh, actually, I experienced that myself, so I disagree with her saying that uh, men don't listen to lyrics. Right. Um, I wanted to... Oh, I have a question about um, a matching, what do you call it, basically a matchmaking company. Mm -hmm. I'm new service. to the area, I just moved here, and um, I'm having a problem meeting women. And uh, I don't know, it feels like a desperate move almost. Yeah, everyone else feels like crap who does it too. So, you, you all have that in common, actually. It's something <laughs> to talk about on the first date. Great. <laughs> you're, 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 you're talking about those ads that say, uh, you want to meet quality singles? Exactly. And they seem pretty good, right? Yeah, it sounds like a reasonable way to meet people because, I don't know, the bar, bar scene isn't really uh, the best, right. best way to meet Is them. it one of those video ones? No, it's not like that. Um, actually, they, they sit you down and ask you all about yourself and try to match you with somebody that has like. How much does it cost? I don't know. They won't tell you that until you go in to meet them. <laughs> but you can't put a price on sex, can you, Jim? Well, uh, actually, actually, you can in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but don't you want to see a picture of somebody? Yeah, to a degree. I, I'd like to know what they look like. But at the same at the same time, it's like, I mean, sex is not my big concern anymore. I, I really want to meet somebody I, I'd like to be with forever. I've heard that's, I've heard of people doing these things, and they seem to actually work out. Some of, yes, there's some success with them. What do you think of these things, Ben? Um, I don't know. It seems kind of weird. <laughs> I've never yeah, done. Yeah, I know it. exactly. I've it, never it, it's got to feel a little tried. funny, but but shit, uh, let's motion see. is motion. If you're doing something and, and and active in some way, that seems to be well. Let's let's different. look at it this way. Uh, these days, when uh, you want to buy a car, you get on the internet and you go shopping around uh, from dealer to dealer. When you want to uh, find another job, you, you send out your resume. Whatever it is you want to do, there's a certain amount of sort of legwork involved and there's like professional headhunters and brokers and there you know if you buy a house you go find a real estate guy and he shows you houses
choices. Right. I, I don't know. Why is dating so much different than any other uh, facet of life? I mean, you're point. in town. I mean, if you were in town and you couldn't find a decent apartment, you'd go to some place, you'd find some guy, he'd show you around, and then you'd be in a nice apartment. And it sounds like a great way to at least meet friends <coughs> and start a relationship. Right. So you, you, know, you, so can't, you can't find I, a woman. I it's it's uh, very successful. tantamount to not being able to find a car and an apartment, which you're going to need so you can uh, have a place to um, get a hand job. Yeah. All right. So uh, you, we give you our, our blessing. Even though, it, yeah, it is kind of a loser. Sure. Yes. You're 29. Yes. What's going on? Oh, I just wanted to say hello to you guys. Um, Adam, you're a hoot. I listen to you often. Um, where's uh, Dr. Drew? He's having a sex with his au pair. Well, that's oh, good. No, yeah. not his au pair. He's married. Yeah, I know. That's why it's okay. <laughs> but he should be with his wife. He hasn't been with her in a while. She's there. Oh, cool. Or she's <laughs> watching. Yeah. Who do you think holds the towel? <laughs> um... Well, I have a comment for Jim. Don't do it. Don't do not do the dating thing? No, don't. I mean, don't well, go through, like, the ads and all that stuff. Well, he wants to use one of those dating services. I don't know. You don't like that? It's desperation, I think. Of course it is. That's well, my own personal opinion, though, because, I don't know, I couldn't go there. Yeah, but desperate um, times uh, for desperate measures, or, or create desperate measures. Well, yeah, but you could go and do things, you know, you can go out, go see some music. Yeah, but that's not go as... Go to the library. Yeah. Hey, there's good-looking people at the grocery I know, but store. why is this so stigmatized? What do you mean? I mean, okay, so you go to a bunch of you go to a bunch of singles bars, you go to some clubs, you go to the mall, you go to the uh, coin op laundry. Uh, six months goes by, you have no luck at all. You're still doing the same damn thing. You know, why not just go to a place that says, "Hey, we got a whole bunch of people on file. They're single. They live around here. They want to go out on a date." I don't know. I'd be embarrassed. Yeah, but. The people you're dating aren't people that they randomly uh, plucked out of society. They're people that <laughs> well, signed up. They're, they're, they're fellow losers. Well, they're paying a fee for the service, so I guess if you're going to pay for it, you know, you must be some sort of upstanding citizen. Well, or, or you're real desperate and you just, like, rob the yeah. liquor store or something. But how much, you He's know... He's new in town, too. Yeah, right. I knew in town. Oh, well, that's understandable. How much... Well, he just needs to, like, wait tables or something. You meet a lot of people that way. Yeah. I had a roommate... That's how was I met a, people here, you know. I had a roommate who was a bartender. Well, there he, you go. Yeah. He uh, got more. I'm sure he wasn't lonely. No, he wasn't. I cursed him for that job. It's like a hey, booze, um, you need to tips, be and sex. On, you need to what? be easy on Dr. John. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I know. Well, you know, the bedding thing. And yeah, so he, easy on I Ben, too. Okay. I like these I like guys. That. Yeah, I know. They're nice. really good. And, Ben, um, I'm glad you did that song. That's really good. You're a stand up guy. Thank you. All right, cool. All right. All right, we're going to go to break. We'll come back with more Ben Folds. Love Line, Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Phone number is 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. W-E-B-N. Oh, yeah, right there. It's Love Line. Oh. On W-E-B-N. Oh. There's no other. Hey, it's Loveline. Adam Carolla, Dr. John, Ben Folds is here, and we will be back in 10 seconds. This is Loveline on Radio Station. We have the G spot on your radio dial. Oh, you're right there. Loveline on 1027. Oh. WEBN, Cincinnati. Love line, Adam Carolla, Dr. John, phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Ben Folds is our guest tonight from uh, the Ben Folds Five. And, uh, you know, Love Line is going to be the subject of a sitcom, this sitcom called uh, Fired Up. It's on uh, NBC. When is it on? NBC at like, uh, it's prime time. It's a regular sitcom, right? Uh huh. When is it? Do you have know. any idea? Uh uh. -uh. All right. And who is who did we have from that show on here? Leah, Leah Remini. Leah Remini. It's fired up the Sharon Lawrence show. Sharon Lawrence, that's right. Anyway, I had to do a table read uh, yesterday. Huh. Never done one in my life. Uh, not a good reader. Pretty big nightmare for me. I uh, I don't recommend it for those who uh, aren't real secure about their reading abilities. A little, little anxious. Just a tad. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, just a tad. I thought it was just going to be us sitting around, you know, just kind of... Once they start the script, they just power right mm. through it. And it's very noticeable if you F up your part. And there's uh, uh, 100 people in the room. 
There's producers and writers. And, They're all watching. Yeah, yeah. all just oh. uh, hovering over you. And you sit at this table in the middle with uh, with the other actors. Hmm. And uh, I got a big part. The, the whole show is, is love line. Huh. You ever done a table dance? That I've done, but yeah, I... Oh, uh, but that table read was tougher. <laughs> I broke a, a stiletto heel and went down and <laughs> hit my head on the cake tap, and that's all I remember from that night. All right. Uh, Elise. Yes. You're 21. Yes, I am. What's First going on? I'll just let me say real quick, um, Ben, you're a very talented musician. Keep up the good work. I, I really admire um, what you're doing. Thanks. Um, anyway, my question is, well, my ex-boyfriend, as of two weeks ago, um, he really enjoyed being suffocated during sex. Mm-hmm. And I've heard that that's associated with some, like, deep, bad psychological problems. And I was wondering, I mean, if that's true, and if so, exactly what that might mean um, from some of his other behaviors. And from what I've heard from other people, he's had kind of a sordid past, mm -hmm. and he's really... Um, emotionally secluded. He doesn't like to talk about his past a lot. And so I was wondering exactly, you know, what might be wrong with him? Because even though we're broken up, I can't help but still care about him and just kind of wonder, you know, what's up with all of that. How'd you suffocate him? Well, usually, um, either he or I had a belt on, and that usually came in handy. Every now and then, if we didn't have that, maybe like electrical cords, things like that. And oh, might really? I add, I did not enjoy doing this. It uh, disturbed me to do this, but I mean, it made him happy. He seemed to really enjoy it, and I figured, I mean, if, if that's what I needed to do to keep him happy, then that's what I had to do. So you, well, j you would just take the cord from, like, the clock alarm and wrap it around his neck while you're in bed and, and kind of cut off his air supply? Yes. I mean, I would hear him, like, choking and gasping under me, and it would... It would really scare me, but I mean, he said afterwards, "Wow, that was really wonderful." Yeah. And I yeah, yeah, yeah. Next time you do that, you got to get him to sign a uh, waiver uh, <laughs> beforehand because uh, then the cops show up and uh, nobody buys the story, and you're, you're at it's least just... manslaughter, probably second degree murder. You understand? Yeah, but yeah. they wouldn't take my word for it. No, nah, I don't think. Even if they did, I, I still think they'd uh, figure the guy died at your hands, you know. Good enough. At least let's talk about you a little bit. I mean, you say you don't like doing this, and though you continue doing it. What is that all about? Well, I... I mean, you're strangling your ex-boyfriend. Yeah. While you're, while you're having sex or making love. Yes. All right. And you I say you don't well, like I mean, it. For me, it was making love. I, I, I mean, to this day, I still love him to death. But, I mean, I have my doubts about how he really felt about me, but that's a different story. Um, I mean, I admit that there's something very wrong with that, with me, you know, going along with, you know, whatever he said, even though I know it hurt him. Well, what do you think is wrong with that for yourself? I mean, what, what, for, for me doing that to him? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it just kind of goes down to that basic, you know, hurting people is just bad, you know? I mean, I, I really hate to hurt him like that. Uh, I mean, that's... All right, let me intervene here for a second, uh, Doctor, if, in uh, fact, that's what you are. <laughs> I... I get the feeling from Elise that she's a little bit young, a little bit naive, uh, eager to please sexually, probably feels like she should do what the guy wants uh, sexually, which a lot of women do, God, God bless them. Didn't oh. feel very good about it. And I don't really see... I know a lot of the. I know most our calls. We turn it back on whoever's calling and saying, "What the? What the hell was up with you being with a person like this?" But uh, I'm not really getting that vibe from Elise. I mean, I I don't get the feeling that she necessarily felt good about it. I get the feeling she did it just because uh, he liked it, and I don't get the feeling that she had a lot of uh, issues coming in coming into the relationship that caused her to do this. But also, might I add that? Um I had heard from several sources, most of them very reliable, that he was cheating on me on a regular basis. Uh -huh. And to right. an extent, I right, felt so like I had to do what I did. All right, let's forget about the uh, strangulation part. Why would you get hooked up with just a guy who's basically an idiot? <laughs> 
that's a really good question. There you I go. Mean, right. I, I wonder about that sometimes myself. But, I mean, we met through the same student organization. We spent a lot of time together. There was a lot of physical attraction. Things seemed really normal and really wonderful at first. And then once I was emotionally attached to him, things started kind of turning for the worse there. And he kind of turned, like, excessively kinky on me. And um, at the time, like I said, I was emotionally attached to him. And I felt like at that point, and especially since I had heard that, you know, like I said, that he was cheating, that, that I had to do what I did to keep him interested, even though I know I shouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. I, I was so desperate to keep him that I felt like I had no choice. So d did you eventually dump him? He dumped me. In fact, this oh. is the third time he dumped me. And it's frankly because, um, well, I'll spare you the story, but it was over something very petty that he broke up with me over. And I voiced my opinion and I said, no, what you're doing is wrong. And, you know, I don't, I deserve to be treated better than that. And instead of, like, changing the way he behaved, you know, to please me, he said, you know, to heck with you and just dumped me like I was some appliance or something. Mm hmm well, it sounds like that's that's the better scenario. Uh, yeah. At this point. Well, you know, uh, she has all the grief and reaction, but that's that's good news. The guy, uh, he he's, um, consistently fools around on her, and he uh, can't ejaculate unless he has a lamp cord uh, tied right. around his neck. That's weird. Not, not necessarily the worst guy to dump you. Right. I mean, uh, that... Uh, people have uh, she's he did you a back. favor she's gone back twice this is the third time yeah so <laughs> at least she has some work to do yeah at least do some work uh, I, I wouldn't really focus on the whole strangulation strangulation aspect of it I just focus on you being hooked up with losers and continually exactly. going back to them to the point where they have to dump you for petty things Excellent. Josh yes sir you got a question for Ben yes sir I do uh Ben. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Good, how's it going? Uh, it's, it's rad. <laughs> I'm talking to you, man. Damn. All right. Um, All right. I, I, had a <laughs> I had a question about um, a lot of your songs. The titles are actually people's names. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to know, are, are they at least loosely based on people that you actually know? Um, because, yeah. like, geez, I can think of, like, nine or ten well, yeah, they're all about real things, but usually what I do is I take the person's name and I substitute someone else I know's name into it. If you just simply put, you know, for next time you're writing a song about someone you know, you should think about this. If you just put the name of the person who uh, who you were writing about in the song, uh, that can be awkward. And if you change the name to some fictitious name, that they'll figure it out. But if you put someone else you both know in there, no one figures it out. It totally screws everyone up, and then you can play the song and not feel right. weird about it. <laughs> That's what I do, actually. Uh huh. You know, so they are like actual experiences. They're, they're, yeah. Everything comes from a real experience, and the names are all people's names who I know. But I'll usually substitute. You know, that'll be someone else. But it seems more powerful to me to be singing a name who I can attach to some sort of face that I know than to make up a name, and I have a hard time just making up stories and, and, and singing it every single night. It doesn't Right, be because they are, like, um, I can really, I really get sucked into, like, these characters and these people. It feels, yeah. it feels like you're very personally in touch yeah. with these experiences that you're singing about. But, like, Summer Beast, is she, is she a real person? Because I saw in the liner notes for... Uh, um, yeah, she she was she was my roommate. Oh, um, for a few years. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, and you she write, also dated the drummer. Do you write songs, Josh? Actually, um, I I came out to school in Southern California from New Jersey, and um, I'm majoring in biology, and I've got no time for it anymore. But I used to be in a band back home. She's uh, goes from a band to biologist. Yeah, it's pretty that's retarded. A, I wish I hadn't done it. Transition. No, that's pretty cool. Most people that are uh, in in bands or play music and are successful at it didn't major in music. That's for sure. Yeah. All well, right, Josh. Can, like get some time to get back into it someday. Josh, you like Ben a lot, right? Oh yeah. You want him to leave like an outgoing message on your machine or something? <laughs> Oh my God! Are you kidding? Hi, this is Ben. I'm over at Josh's place. Yo, would you do it? No, he's not going to do that. Are you kidding? He's a big star. What a tease! I can't believe. Yeah, you guys. he wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'd be happy to do that. And I, you know, it, do, you, do you like to be strangled? I'll do that too. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I have a friend who uh, does that. He he gets celebrities to do, you know, like, uh, ah, this is uh, Steve Martin, and uh, <laughs> you're, uh, this is, but, and it's kind of funny. It's like, uh, um, 
um, this is uh, Ed McMahon, and you're listening. But it's it's kind of like I know he forced these guys to do it. Yeah. So it's it's. I got Jewel to, to put a happy birthday on my girlfriend's answering machine once. Oh really? Yeah. I got the. What are you uh, doing hanging out with Jewel? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no. Just, <laughs> you know, you know what I did. Yeah. I got. Uh, I got. Uh, you know, did you see the uh, Nutty Professor? Oh yeah, yeah. The and all right, remember the dude? Um, what the. Man, I've got to start remembering people's names. It's going to come to me. The uh, uh, comedian at the club, Reggie. Right. When he comes out and he goes, Women be shopping. Can't stop a woman from shopping. Uh, what the hell's that comedian's name? All right. You guys are going to be no help. Mike, uh, you, got, you got Mike, find out. Seemed like anyway, it was based on I got him Mike. to leave that message on my uh, girlfriend's that answering guy? machine. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got him to call my girlfriend and go, Women be shopping. <laughs> 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 yes, these are where the things you can do when you're quasi uh, celebrities, like uh, Bennett. Well, like oh, myself, right. not yes. Bennett. I feel like I should put an outgoing message on the guy's machine, though, since you said so. Well, let me see if he's around. Josh? Oh, yes. Oh, you're still hanging. All right, oh. I'll, I'll tell you what. Is there any way uh, that uh, Ben could do this uh, from the bathroom during the commercial over the phone? Man, that'd be ideal. Whatever. All right. Whatever it takes. You, you got a regular phone machine? Um, a phone machine? Uh-oh. Uh, what? I'm sorry. I just uh, can you translate that? Do you when somebody calls and you're not there, <laughs> does the phone just keep ringing? An answering machine, you mean? Yeah. I've got an answering machine. Oh, yet, you do. Sir. Okay. I should have said answering. I'm sorry. All right, hang on. Uh, Josh, like, I'm not at a junior college. All right, cue it up, would you? <laughs> All right, great. All right, and hang on. All right, uh, Ben. Uh, we'll put Josh on hold, and Ben, you can say hi to him uh, <laughs> okay. when we go to break in five minutes. So uh, where the hell were we? Crystal. Hi. You're 19. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, my question was that, is it normal for a straight woman to fantasize about women? Yes. I, I see it in all the movies I have. And then when the guy comes into the room, though, they're really still more into the guy, and they have sex with him. You've seen those movies? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's those like... Which movies are those? They're two women, and they're, you know, there's no guys around, so they start getting it on, but then when the guy comes in to, like, repair something, they go, no, oh, right. Never, Especially if he's got a mustache. All, right. Yeah. Like yeah, a hard hat. You always yeah. believe what you see never, ever fantasize about men, though. You don't fantasize about men. No. But you've never had an experience with a woman. No. Uh, are you currently in a relationship? With a woman? Listen, goofball, you just got done telling me you'd never been with a woman. Okay. No, I'm not in a relationship right now, no. Okay. And you've been with men? Yes. And is there anything that could have turned you away from men at any point in your life? Probably. What happened? Some uh, sexual abuse? Um, that and yeah. I was raped. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I've been fantasizing about women since I was 14, and that was way before any of this bad stuff happened. Mm, the not not before the sexual abuse, though. Yes, way before. Um, I hadn't even mm. been with a man yet. Mm, when were you sexually abused? Um, I was uh, in a relationship from age 15 to age 18, and I was then at that time. And is that when you were raped? I, I was by a different person I was raped on my 18th birthday. Dave Chappelle. That's the name of the guy who went, <laughs> women be shopping. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Mike. Um, all right. Like Dave Chappelle raped her. <laughs> <laughs> God, really. Hey, it's Reggie. Uh, uh, um, so, uh, okay, so uh, yeah. you, you got raped after this relationship. Yeah, by a totally different person. Okay, but here's my question. You got yourself into a relationship from 15 to 18 with a guy who was sexually abusing you? Yes, yeah, sexually, physically, and mentally. So, okay, so three years of abuse. Yeah. What happened before 15 that set you up for this guy? Um, actually, I lived a very sheltered life. Um, like aside from my... I was never sexually abused before then, ever. Um, my father physically abused me in well, my childhood, but... All right. That, that's probably good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so your dad physically abused you. You got the notion that it was kind of okay for guys to abuse you. You got hooked up with a guy, um, oh, coincidentally enough, uh, when you were 15, who turned out to be an abuser. Mm -hmm. And uh, he then abused you. And then later on, like I was telling Ben um, and, and John during the break, then the rape came later on, after, the, after you'd been sort of set up. Mm -hmm. I mean, emotionally. Well, what happened with the rape? Um, it was a relative of mine's boyfriend. 
supposed to take me to his house to get the VCR to take to her house and just raped me. Mm. Just attacked me. Uh, and did you press charges? Um, no. No, because your dad did these uh, things to you beforehand and then your boyfriend and you felt like maybe it was your fault and you didn't want to get involved. Right. right. Okay, so no wonder... You, no wonder you fantasize about women. That's I mean, good uh, guys haven't been real good to you. But I started fantasizing about women before I even got involved with guys. Yeah, but your dad was abusive for, for many a year before that. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm So, here's what I'm saying. I, listen, I don't want to take away your potential lesbianism <laughs> or bisexuality, but so many of the people we talk to had their sexuality driven instead of found it. You know what I mean? They got pushed a direction instead of just coming, right. uh, stumbling onto it. When you're know, watching the Dinosaur Classic, uh, all of a sudden there's uh, some feelings and something like that. Your dad screwed you for men a long time ago. And that's why I think you fantasize about women. But I don't know if, in fact, you're very you're you're actually attracted to women, or you want to but, follow through with it physically. To get back to your original question, is it normal? Yes. Now, how can we help you? What are you struggling with? Well, it's just that I've been fantasizing about it, and I don't enjoy the sex that I've had with men. I've never enjoyed it, uh -huh. whether I volunteered for it or not. Right. And I was just wondering, you know, is it just normal for someone to just sit there and be, you know, thinking about women and sexually fantasizing? Or would it mean that maybe I should go out and possibly try the other side of the fence? I think that there's some definite issues with men that you could benefit from working through. And I don't know if you've done that, but I would strongly recommend talking with somebody about it. Have you done any of that? Done what? Been in any counseling? Um, uh, all through high school. Okay. Anything more? And are those issues worked through for you? Um, what about, do you mean? Well, the issues of being raped and abused. Yeah, I got over it. I'm, I, I went on with my life. I mean, I, there's nothing I can do about it. It's done. All right, so here's here's what I... All right, we, we got to go to break. Here's And Ben's got to leave an outgoing message on Josh's <laughs> machine, so we got to hustle up. Here, here's how I would conclude this. Um, go ahead and experience a woman. I don't think it's going to uh, be the uh, cure for your problem. I think your problem right. it needs a little more therapy and a little more work. Dad being abusive, uh, being raped, having an abusive uh, a boyfriend for three years. Uh, more than the high school guidance counselor for a couple semesters. Uh, this, this is going to take a lot of work. And eventually, when you get through those... Uh, issues, I think you'll have a different outlook sort out. on your sexuality. Until then, um, yeah, if you want to, ex you know, experiment, experiment, but understand that's the core issue. Well, and the fantasizing is not a real problem. No, hell, yeah, do it all the time. I feel so liquidy. Really? Why? You're listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, I'll be right back. WEBN. to swallow. We've got a frog in our throat. Lick it up. It's Loveline. W-E-B-N. Hi, this is Jenna Jameson, Starlet of the Year, and nothing makes me hotter than listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Boy, that was a pretty weak read on that one, wasn't it? All right. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Drew's not in tonight. Dr. John is in for him. Ben Folds is in, uh, filling in for Ben Folds uh, tonight. And speaking of Ben Folds, we're going to play something off of Whatever and Ever I'm In. And this one is called Song for the Dumped.
the dumped by the uh, amazingly versatile Ben Folds 5 and uh yeah, it's a good song thanks that uh, you know kind of um, r- reminded I'm trying to think of um, who you remind me of uh, musically and um traffic just uh, popped oh, yeah? in my head uh, on that song actually someone's told me about that song that it sounded like Dr. John oh yeah such a night, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor John. Yeah, but the piano bit I think is more Leon Russell. Those kind of things I hear that a lot. Right, Leon. traffic. That's cool though. Oh yeah, like yeah. the uh, low spark of high heeled boys or something like that. What the yeah. hell song was I thinking of? Yeah, they're a good group. Traffic. Yeah, or they were. Ben Folds is here, and so is Doctor John. And uh, we we're just talking about Doctor John. Yeah. And Die is thirty. What's going on? Um, hey, I'm just calling to say hi to Ben Folds. Hey, what's happening? Um, you remember Vienna? Oh, yeah. Excellent. I was just calling to say hi. Haven't, I mean, we, nobody knew where you were, and then you had this album come out, and so now, um... You living, you living in Hollywood? I'm living in Hollywood now. What are you doing? What am I doing? Um, I'm an actor. Cool. How do you guys know each other? Um, we went to Vienna on this study abroad trip way long ago, and, uh... She was she was a student of mine. A student, he taught me how to play percussion. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, really. Why do you got to go to Vienna to learn how to play a drum? Well, you don't, but I wanted to go to Vienna, so I learned how to play a drum. Uh huh. Was there any romance between you two? N- no. no. No, but you kind of wish there was now, huh? <laughs> Back then, he was just some uh, doofus with a maraca. Oh, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Now he's Ben Folds. Now he's Ben Folds. Well, he was Ben Folds then, too. You just didn't know it yet. Yeah, but he's really Ben Folds now. <laughs> you still die, Coob? Absolutely. Cool. You still die your what? <laughs> what's, what's die, Coob? That's, That's her name. name. Oh, Coob? Mm-hmm. Coob. Die, Coob. Wow. We both got that accent, too. That's I know. Cool. We're like, on. hey, how you doing? I don't know you. So, uh, you guys, how long ago was this trip, Di? Um, it was in 87. It was actually exactly 10 years ago we got... Yeah. Um, yeah, we went to Prague and Vienna and all... And Czech, and, um, Czech. um, Hungary. And, yeah. and we got to go to East Germany yeah. when it was still East Germany. And this is, this is, uh, through what college? Duke or, University. Yeah. Oh, Duke? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Never went to college. You never... <laughs> if Duke had a junior college, I may have attended that. <laughs> well, it was... They didn't. So you guys haven't spoken in 10 years? No, not in 10 years. And you didn't have sex um, somewhere in Prague? No, he was a little busy. Oh, he had another woman? <laughs> she rejected me. Oh, liar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, he's a big star now, Di. He's See? Reunited. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, how's the acting going, Di? Oh, uh, it's doing okay. Yeah. It's doing okay. It is? Mm-hmm. Why? What are you doing? Oh, I'm not going to... You're not doing adult movies, are you? Um, no, no, I'm not. Not yet. That's um, damn cool because you weren't, um, you, what were you majoring in at the time? Uh, I actually, I hadn't, I declared a major in German when I got back from there. Yeah. So I, I hadn't declared yet. I was, I don't know. Hey, not, Di, hmm. you want Ben to leave an outgoing message on your machine? Absolutely, <laughs> I do. All right, I'll put you on hold. Okay. All right. <laughs> 
this is Adam. Please leave a message. All right. All right, you smart ass. <laughs> hey, is, isn't it illegal if someone takes your uh, voice off your message machine and plays it over the air that way? I get more crap for that message. But I think people appreciate a short message, don't they? You know, there's people with so. this leave your name and number and the oh. time that you called and state a short minute. I mean, come on. This technology has been around for 15 years now. You don't have to explain to people <laughs> what to do. As a matter of fact, if someone... Hi, this is uh, Adam. Please leave a message. If, it, if I don't want... I don't want somebody leaving a message who does not understand the dance of the message machine, who needs an explanation. Thank you. Todd. Yeah. You're 24. Yeah, I just want to say to you, Ben Folds, um, I saw you guys up in Berkeley when you guys opened up for the uh, Counting Crows. Yeah. And my girlfriend and I were up there, and um, we just had a good night seeing you guys and seeing the, the Counting Crows. And um, for like one night, we didn't fight and didn't have any problems, just hung out and and listened to you guys. And it was really cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, hey, you, you, better, you better follow him like the dead. Right. <laughs> Buy the album. <laughs> you got and, the CD, Todd? Actually, I don't. Oh, well, you better I'll get it. Get that. I will. Yeah. I will. That'll I feel a little strange. Relationship. Yeah. Telling him how uh, how good he was in not having the CD. And let me kiss uh, Ben's ass a little more here by saying that we get tons and tons of bands on this show, and um, a lot of big name bands. And we sometimes they get a little offended because uh, over the course of two hours they get a call or two yeah. for them because people call because they have problems and they want them answered in yeah. in general. And uh, the fact that uh, every third call or every second call on here is, uh, you know, basically someone who just wants to give you a shout out is um, is uh, quite a testament to your talent. Well, I actually had a little bit more of that. No. Okay. All right. Well, forget that whole speech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There goes that That's got, uh, Come on, what's your piece. problem, guy? Um, actually, it's, uh, it's my third relationship has just uh, ended and it's been a pattern of me being... Um, overly possessive and jealous and um this third one's a little bit different because it's we lived together and that was the first time that's happened and um she moved back up to sacramento just um about a month ago and we kind of broke up after she moved back up there over the phone yeah and um so it's just a pattern that now i'm trying to work on it after we've broken up not doing it try to stay out salvage relationship but after we've broken up but I don't want to go out and look for other girls like I had before with, you know, partying and whatever. So um, that's my question, I guess, is is should I try to salvage a relationship or just work on this problem by myself and just, you know, try to see if I can have something for the future for the next Well, you're year. probably going to make the same mistake again with her. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I know you are. But the part about you working on it yourself and trying to bring a little less of it to your next relationship is a pretty good one. Okay. An excellent idea. Uh, so, you will bring some of it to your next relationship. The, you would just need a little time to whittle it away and see if you can get it to go from like 200 pounds to maybe 135 or something. Mm -hmm. So what do you get so jealous about? <laughs> um, actually, it's weird. It's because of it's, it's really anything. It's not necessarily guys, although that is a large part, but it's also, it seems to be anything that makes her happy seems threatening to me, um, be it friends or, you know, girls or guys, friends or, or anything, so. Kind of like you're not the only person in the world that makes her happy. Right, and that's, I mean, I've told her that I can identify the problem, and that's what makes it so difficult is that I can identify it, yet it still, you know, happens, and, and even after you know, the relationship ends, then I feel this, like, tremendous amount of guilt because, you know, I can't really... Like that song you guys just played, that's totally perfect <laughs> for me because I got dumped, but I feel this guilt because I know that it was basically my fault, so... Yeah. Uh, so you kind of sabotage the relationship because you get a little too intimate. Basically, yeah. All right. What did you... Did your mom take a dump on you? No, my dad did. Oh, your dad did? Yeah. Well, that's refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, um, we were we were pretty close, and... And they got divorced when I was early teens, so. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's that's where it's in yeah. the last psychology class, and they've actually been to several different counselors, and yeah. I'm in counseling right now. But yeah, well, all right. So, so you know, you know what's going on, and you're working on it, and uh, there's there's no really quick cure. I mean, here's here's my feeling, and don't stop me from wrong, John. Uh, when you're young, you just have more energy toward 
to put into negative feelings or, or just uh, feelings in general. Things come out uh, to be, there's a lot more fighting, there's a lot more tears, there's a lot more arguments, there's just a lot more. I mean, I, I noticed the difference in myself between the age of uh, 23 and, and, let's say, 33, where I'm at now. I, I'm a little more enlightened, but I don't have the destructive energy that I used to have in relationships. I used to get into a relationship and really work at tearing them apart, you know, actively. What once were you I, doing once when I you got into you know, just, just screwing up relationships. But I you mean, didn't have a job or anything? Oh, I was uh, swinging a hammer and uh, uh, unhappy about it. And, you know, life wasn't, you know, no car insurance, no debt. That's what I that, found for me. That. When you're focused on something you like doing outside of relationships, seems to be healthier. I don't it, know. It certainly, sure. yeah, I mean, it certainly helps if yeah. you're happy. Uh, in general, and you bring that sort of uh, self-assuredness and success and all that stuff to the relationship, right. it makes it a lot easier. But just in general, I mean, almost on a biological level, the whole, you know, drinking and fighting and yelling and, you know, uh, burning out in front of, on the lawn at right. the chick's house and all, all that stuff uh, seems to have gone away with, with the years. Well, you're more stable. Thank so, you. I yeah, would hate go. to have seen you at 23, but oh, you I, are more stable. I was kicking now. indoors going, I want my softball mitt, you bitch. Uh, I <laughs> thought I dumped you a year ago. I, I know, and I hope I never see you again, uh, but I want my softball mitt. I know it's around here somewhere. And Please. Then I found a soiled condom underneath the bed. Oh. and uh, Oh. Bastard. Oh, the pain. Oh, oh. Man. Oh, I cried when I drove home. Oh. Oh, but the, Burning now. The, I'm saying that, guys, I knew I was in Todd's position at 24. Maybe not quite as, as, as acute as he is, but I had that going, too. I was aware of what I did, but I couldn't stop myself from doing it. But yeah. as the years wore on, I did. Because you got more stable. You got more That's secure. Right. That's right. That's right. And Todd's in counseling, and Todd's aware of what's going on. And you had some and therapy, and I would think it was probably the therapist's credit that you were a lot more stable. Mm, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. You know, I the last therapy I was in was uh, group therapy. Uh, and I didn't was, know that. And I was in with, like, uh, like eight people. And... Uh, I left the group therapy because I was like 28 and the average age of the group was like uh, 17. <laughs> so there'd be some you graduated. <laughs> there'd be some 14-year-old kid sitting next to me and he'd be going my folks that came into my room and they found a bong and so I'm really pissed at my dad and so I stopped flushing the toilet cuz it's like screw them. <laughs> and I was like, okay, listen, kid, I got I got problems here. I'm this close to 30. I got no goddamn career. I'm, I'm having relationship problems here. You're worried about, you know, you're, you're worried about your dad uh, coming into your room and invading your space. I, I couldn't identify with all these people so. and their adolescent problems, so I got out of there. And then when I tried to leave the group, they all turned on me. Oh, yeah. you're you're running away, Joe. Isn't that typical? <laughs> Just like all the rest. Go, Adam, keep fleeing, keep running. Uh, no, I'm just done. No, you're not, Adam. Yeah. You're fleeing and you're abandoning. And like the chicks were crying and stuff. It was, it, was a, it was a really heavy scene. And I said to my dad, who's a therapist, I said, Dad, uh, I'm done with this group therapy and I want to just phone it in. You know, I want to be like Charlie from Charlie's Angels, where um, like I, I get on the thing and I go, uh, attention group, uh, I'm not there today, but I thank you for all gathering around the speakerphone. I'm now officially self-actualized. I enjoyed meeting each and every one of you. Uh, Joey, good luck with the parents and the bong and the intrusion. And um, <clears throat> I'll be um, spending the rest of my uh, free time um, enjoying my life. Thank you, and uh, God's speed to all of you. But uh, my dad said, no, you got to go in there in person and you got to, you know, face the group and, and tell them. Huge mistake. Uh, uh, if anyone's getting out of group therapy, just stop just showing go. up. Just go. <laughs> or announce it at the end of your last uh, meeting. Don't go in right. there. Uh, oh, oh you're running. You. you keep running at them. You never stop. <sighs> okay. But you know what I said to the group uh, before we go to break and uh, this becomes too cathartic? I said, listen, <laughs> I, I've, I've done enough therapy, I've, 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 I've heard enough, I've read enough, I've learned enough. I got to go out and be successful. 
the reason I'm miserable now is not because of anything psychological. It's because I don't have a pot to piss in, and I don't have insurance on my car. I have to go out and do something for myself, and that'll be the greatest therapy ever. Me getting a, 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 a radio gig or a TV gig or whatever the hell I get is going to be worth 300 trips to the therapist. And uh, God bless me, I was right. All right, we'll be back with uh, Ben Folds and uh, Dr. John after this. This is Love Line. Love Line will be right back. WEBN. Radio that keeps you up at night. It's Love Line only on WEBN. Hey, it's the Love Line with Ben Folds from the Ben Folds Five and uh, Dr. John from, uh, well, you've seen him on Saturday Night Live and his uh, many appearances. Now, Dr. John is a uh, friend of Dr. You are, in fact, a friend of Dr. Drew's? Yes, you bet. Good friend of Dr. Drew's well, from Pasadena. Now that he's a big star, everyone says that. Where do you know him from? Fifth grade. Oh, really? Dude. Oh, okay. Long time friend. Jeez, I can only imagine what your hair looked like back then. I, I've seen... Do you like it? Well, it's all right now, but I'm saying I, I've seen <laughs> pictures of Drew's hair... Scary. ...from high school. And, uh, we've had this conversation. I know we have, but I'm, we've never really directed it at you. <laughs> True. I blame my um, lack of sexuality with my hair. Uh -huh. I blame it on my hair. Uh -huh. I really did some serious thinking at a certain point in life, and and I realized this that I think your the, the way you perceive yourself, um, the way you actually I should say it this way, the way you perceive others perceiving you, like the opposite sex. Meaning all guys and all girls have this, they think, you know, either women like them or, or men like them or they don't. And I think that gets kind of ingrained in you somewhere around junior high, somewhere around puberty, 13, 14, 15, 16. If it ain't happening then, it's never going to happen, or at least it feels like it's never going to happen. I... That was 19, like, 76, 77, 78, 79 for me when everyone had that... Uh, Do you have your hair feather, in the Feathered middle? back hair. You were in the middle, right? Yeah. And I'll hold on, Ben. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. So now you can kind of picture this mop, uh, yeah. and I'm trying to feather it back, yeah. and I'm trying to I'm trying to look like Sean Cassidy, and people are asking me if I have a vitamin deficiency <laughs> and what's wrong with no. me and all that stuff. So now uh, my hair is fine. I mean, it doesn't look fine now, yeah. but if I put a little handful of goop or something in it, yeah, I'll put the hat back. Are you offended? <laughs> you're your, your therapist. Try a little goop. I, I don't I wear the hat, thing. so I don't have to use the goop, but the point is, is my hair is fine now but to me to me i'm still brillo head from high school right or junior high and i will always look at myself that way when it comes to women you see you understand wow, it got sorry. ingrained a long time ago yeah, i'm sorry yeah it's tough <sighs> kate kate hello you're 18 yeah i'm 18 yeah my name is kate yeah um well my problem is um a former teacher of mine he's 32 um he wants to get together with me and um, he's talked to me about it a few times. Um, I graduated from high school last year, so um, he's not my teacher anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know what to say to him. He's been waiting for my answer, um, but I don't know what to say because I think the age thing might be a bit much. I mean, he says he's crazy about me, and you know, and I really love him. Mm -hmm. well, why do you, you think the age thing is a bit well much? Mostly because. Um, um, I mean, he's been married and divorced for three years, uh -huh. and um, and I'm a virgin. I've never, you know, done anything like that, and that's part of it that scares me. Cause I'm afraid, you know, he'll want to go too fast. And yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what what class did you have this guy for? Um, is it okay if I don't say that? I'm going with um, history or pedophilia. <laughs> the first is right. <laughs> yeah. Damn. That's weird, huh? Yeah. I don't know why uh, history teachers are pervs. I had a couple uh, of pervs. teachers. I was going to go English. Um, yeah, this, here's the deal, Kate. You kind of get a little vibe about a guy who's um, trying to, uh, got divorced and wants to get it on with one of his students. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, and the, the guy's a little bit flawed. I mean, 14 he's... 14-year difference. She was just in high school. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think he's. He's just a little flawed. bit, little bit flawed there, Kate. And uh -huh. I, I think your instincts are pretty good on this one. Really? So you think yeah. I should just break it off totally and not see him anymore, or? What do you? See, how much you see in him? Um. Well, um, I haven't seen him for like a week or two, but um, before it was about twice a week, and we just kind of hung out together. <laughs> you see, we go to the same college, except he he's a grad student. Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust a guy who hangs out with um, former students anyway. Unless no. he just wants no, sex, in which case I don't trust him anyway. But I would actually trust him more if he was just there for the sex, which he probably is. Yeah, he's not there for the sex because um, his um, ex-wife came back to him and said, you know, I want to get back with you. And he said no because of me. Yeah, because he yeah, thought he might no. have sex with you. Yeah, I, I don't, it just, it has a creepy feel to it. It does. And there's a huge, there's a huge developmental difference between you and him. And you've got other, you've got things Although I'm to guessing experience. she's more mature than he is in, in many ways. <laughs> That's what I was, uh, you're implying. implying that. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal, Kate. Trust your creepy instincts. Absolutely. I mean, I, I can understand it when it, you, you look at a teacher as a uh, f authority figure, and when they say something, it just sounds like it must be a good idea, even if it means uh, dating you and getting in your pants. But don't let him bully you uh, emotionally yeah. that way, Kate. Stick with it. Save your virginity for me. Let's see what part of town she said. Where are you calling from, Kate? Kate? Oh, she must have hung up. Yeah. No, I didn't. I'm oh, here. Jesus, Kate. <laughs> Can Hello? we stop going through this ritual with you? Kate? Yeah. What town are you in? I'm in San Diego. Oh, in San Diego? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be making a stop there on my uh, Rob Your Virginity tour. Oh, oh, thanks. I'm doing a radio tour where I go from uh, all 50-something uh, <laughs> affiliates and have sex with a virgin. <laughs> you know, and right there, it's kind of a radio stunt. People will be invited to watch. So, Kate, I'll uh, be looking for you in San Diego. All right, one more call. Jonah. Yay, yeah, hi. Is that Jonah? Yeah, Jonah. All right. You're 14. What's going on? I am, well, I just, I want to say Ben Folds, you're, you're Lord, man. Thanks. You, I don't know, you're, um, you, I'm, ever since November 28th, when I saw you guys at the Fillmore in San Francisco, um, I've, you know, been really obsessed with you. You're 14? Yeah. Wow. Huh. You got a cool voice for 14. Yeah, huh? really. Well, I'm, I'm trying 14. to talk quiet because my parents are in the next room. All right. Yeah. Well, tell me you're masturbating. No, no. Oh, okay. Actually, I, I got the Barry White thing going on. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, speaking of, you know, getting in the mood for loving, at the Ben Folds 5 concert then, I, I met this girl, and um, she, I live in Oakland, and it turns out she lives in Sacramento, and I found that out after the concert. But, um, and since then, we've been talking, and I, she came out here once, and, we're both going to be at the concert on Saturday and stuff, but I'm just wondering how much, you know, it's worth pursuing a uh, relationship with someone so far away. You want Ben to leave an outgoing message on her machine? Um, well, I was planning on that, but then everyone else started, so oh, I guess yeah, not going anymore. Cool. You know? Everyone's got one. Hey, I think you're yeah. kind of, um, let's see, Sacramento is quite a, quite a distance from Oakland, isn't it? Like an hour and a half, I think. Yeah, and you don't, like, the BART doesn't go out that way, does it? It goes up and down, mainly. Yeah, but you don't get out to Sacramento on any good piece of rapid it's transit. She comes out here because, you know, all the action's in Oakland. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. That's the garden spot of the world, that Oakland. All right. Uh, we're uh, plumb out of time, uh, Jonah. So here, here's what I would say. Uh... I think you're kind of asking for trouble uh, for two years before you get your license to hook up with someone who's 100 miles away or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm And, I mean, if you love her, you love her, and if it's great, it's great. But it just seems like you're going to torture yourself, doesn't it? That's I mean, you're 14 short. years old. She's far away. There's other people that you go to school with that are interested. Hell, maybe a stepsister or something right there in the house. You could, uh, oh. okay, that's poor advice. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so if she's really, really special, I'd do it. But if it's just uh, for the sake of having a girlfriend, I wouldn't do it. And we'll be back. Uh, oh, yeah. Everybody now. <laughs> Love line, I'll be right back. <laughs> WEBN. <laughs> We're not keeping you up, are we? I'm pitching a tent. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's Love Line. WBBN. All right. Well, we're uh, 
putting to bed another uh, fabulous edition of Loveline. I want to thank Ben Folds for coming in here and being uh, a real sweetheart of a guy. Thanks. Whatever and uh, ever I'm in is the name of the CD. I demand that you all go out and buy it. And if you already have one, then just buy another one and, and just, you don't have to bring it home, just buy it. Mm. All right, I want to thank Dr. John for coming in here and doing a mediocre job filling in for Dr. Drew. No. <laughs> No, you're better than that. Oh. And you stayed the whole Thank two hours. I, did. I was worried I did. that uh, two hours may mean an hour and a half, <laughs> since uh, an hour means 45 <laughs> minutes to Dr. John. But uh, he was here for the long haul, or maybe he thought the show was two hours and 45 minutes, <laughs> and he's ready to leave. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. John saying mahalo. Hi, this is Adam. Please leave a message. Mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed herein are not necessarily those of the staff or management or producers or directors or the advertising or anyone. But they might be Bob's. I'm Bob and they're mine. The producer of Loveline is Ann Wilkins. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment. Grr. Arg. We now return you to your highly tested, regularly scheduled programming. Bye.